Collecting. Collecting. Get back, please. Collecting by the paper. in Tuna, Texas, serving the greater Tuna area at 275 watts, shining on. Good morning, Tuna. This is Thurston Wheeler. And this is Arliss Scrooby. And this is the Wheeler Scrooby Report. <laughs> in the news today, we've got the finalists of the Tuna High School American Heritage Essay Contest for this year. And three-time winner Connie Carp is leading the pack with her essay titled, Human Rights, Why Bother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other finalists are Jimbo Beaumont for Living with Radiation and Levita Posey for The Other Side of Bigotry. Mm -hmm. Well, Arliss, I'll tell you now, with subjects like that, it's going to be tough to pick a winner. It is. It is. It is. It is. Jody! If those dogs wake your daddy, I am loading this gun and we'll be minus about eight of them. And I want that yard picked up. Yeah, here's something. Oh, I have bad news for the greater Tuna area. Former County Judge Roscoe Buckney died at his home early this morning. He had suffered a severe stroke. Yeah! Judge Sorry. Buckney has been mostly bedridden for the past 15 years. And to think of him being wheeled into that courtroom to dispense with justice, it's a great loss. Now, the body will lie in state at Hubert Funeral Home starting today at 12 noon. And Assistant Mortician Finus Bly says if you come before noon, you're going to have to wait because the judge won't be ready till noon. Well, I'll tell you, folks, that's some bad news. It is. It is. It is. It is. I wonder if he broke the record. He sure worked at it. Come on, yow, yow! Charlene, don't do those yells on an empty stomach. You'll hyperventilate. Go upstairs and wake your brother. Mother, you know I can't relate to him ever since he got out of prison. Charlene, Stanley was in reform school. Your daddy was in prison. Fine, fine. Charlene, light and eat. Just coffee for me. Now some oatmeal, it'll stick to your ribs. Oh, dag me, mother. Eat. Mama, can I have another puppy? No. Oh, Mama. Don't start. Eat dogs in two minutes. Stanley, I thought you were still in bed. Honey, you want some oatmeal? Mm-mm. Well, baby, I could fry you some bacon. Mm-mm. Would you try some hash browns? Mama, get off. I'll get some M&Ms on the way to trade school. Stanley, don't lie to me about trade school. Vera Karp said that you spent half the morning yesterday just sitting in your car out in front of the grocery store. Vera Karp can kiss my rusty butt. Mother. Make him stop that gutter talk I am trying to eat. Yeah, I've never seen you when you weren't. I am ignoring you, Stanley. I'm giving you the big egg. I've got other things to think about. Yeah, well, why don't you think about how depressed you're going to be when you don't get the cheerleader again? Thunder thighs. 
Mother, both of you, hush. Your daddy is trying to sleep. Jody! Please don't kill me. You used my good cake plan to be those girls all Charlene, you have not touched your food. I'll be fine, Mother. Yeah, well, if you black out, I ain't gonna hold your feet up till you come to. You better. When I black out, you have a moral obligation to hold my feet up and get the blood flow back to my brain. Yeah, I'll let you lay there like a goddamn squash. <laughs> Mother, that's not funny. You're talking about my brain. Hush! You are going to wake your father. Stanley, you will hold your sister's feet up. Charlene, shut up about your brain. Yeah, it's a real limited subject. I hate your cells. Charlene, Stanley, you two would not be so hateful if you had some food in your stomach. Well, I guess you heard about Judge Buckney. What about him? He died. Yeah. Stanley, stop grinning. You are supposed to act sad when a person dies, even if you hated him. Oh, Mama, get off. Remember when Aunt Rima died? Acted sad at her funeral. I remember you set off bottle rockets at the cemetery. Not my fault they buried her on the 4th of July. Well, I want you to stick around the house today. Too many people like that old bastard. You can skip trade school just this once. I might as well be talking to a toaster. Where are you going? Oh, get off. I'm just going over to Aunt Pearl. That's what worries me. And don't let those dogs in the house. Get back, Whoopi. You come through that door and you'll need drugs to kill the pain. Now, I'm at it. Both of me considerate. God damn it. I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm sure you didn't. Coming home late at the wee hours of the morning, just like you do every night. Big and sick. Didn't get much sleep left. That was Patsy Klein. Thank you, Patsy. Got a phone call today from Nadine Wooten's mother, Norma. Now, as you folks know about this time every year, poor Nadine stands out along Route 4 with her suitcase. Now, don't try and pick her up because she's only going to tell you she's waiting on her fiancé, Mr. Montague. Of course, we all know he ain't a coming. <laughs> but just remember to look out for her. Don't run over her and don't try and pick her up. Now, in the farm report, Chester Burris has upped the stud fee on his prize bird dog ripper ever since he won second prize at the Lubbock Bird Dog Show. So if you want a little bit of ripper in your future hunting dogs, it's going to cost you $200 a throw. $200. Hell, I'd put on a collar and bark if they paid me that kind of money. They only knew how much I hated that dog. <laughs> oh, no. It's that egg-sucking poodle from across town. I'll kill it. Get out of those roses! Get out of them! Oh, why people don't keep their dogs at home is a mystery to me. Oh, Lord, he's gotten the chickens. I'll kill it. Where is he? Where is my strict man? Please, God, don't. Lord, where is Chester? I'll kill Chester if he's hidden. Oh, I hate to use the gun. It's so messy. Messy, messy, messy. Come here, you little egg sucker. Get down here. Come on. There you go. Let me get a bead on you. Oh, Stanley, you startled me. Hell, oh. I'd like you to go after a dog with the gun. Oh, man. <laughs> Uncle Chester, how'd you stick me in again? Oh, I'd have made a bitter pill, but I couldn't find it. Well, what's that up there? Oh, give it here, quick. Hell, Pearl, the poodle is gone. Well, he'll be back. Stanley, he's gone. Who is? The judge, he's gone, dead. That is a myth. I'd like a 
the line. Down for the count. He's crossed that distance. He's short. shipped out. He's fired. Stiff as a board. His number was up. He's a member. He forget it. Hell, I don't even remember what he looked like. <laughs> What do you know that I don't know? Oh, Norma called early. Nikki Mayberry found the body, you know. Norma said he was laughing so hard she had to throw a glass of iced tea on him to make him settle. Oh, but, you know, I've never known that Mayberry boy to laugh at anything. No sense of humor, just like a turnip. Something's up. I can feel it. <laughs> Sammy, you've let Chester's bird dog out of that pen again. <laughs> Ripper, get out of the army! Oh, hell, Pearl, how come y'all still got Ripper pinned up? He'll get hit by a car. He's not smart. Quick, go lock him up. Oh, hell, Pearl, ain't enough cars come by here anyhow. Besides, he don't like being in a cage any more than I did. Oh, Stanley, I know. But my horoscope's been having a spell. It said deception would seek me out. Oh, and I've had those feelings. It's awful. It worries me. Hell, Pearl. Well, something's brewing. I can feel it. I may have to get out the tea leaves. Next up, we've got a meeting of the smut snatchers of the new order. <laughs> this afternoon down at the Gifford County Baptist Church, starting about 5 o'clock. And uh, the smut snatchers' latest project is cleaning up those dictionaries down at Tuna High School. Now, if you know of a word that you feel has questionable value or a word you feel that just should not be in the dictionary, if you don't want your child around the word, you bring the word to the meeting. The Reverend Spike says he'll consider each word on a word-by-word -word basis. I haven't finished my list yet. Jody, honey, what is that out there on the back porch? No. Uh-uh. I will not have another puppy. Oh, Mama. It followed me home. Jody, you cannot have another dog. Hello? Bertha? Hello, Vera. Bertha, what are we going to do about the snack? Well, what about it? Uh, the Smut Snatcher's Dictionary hit list. Hang on. Gracias, Lupe. Half and half. Poor for Oh, Lupe. Tell Virgil he's still grounded. Don't leave the yard. Are you going? Yeah, hold on. Jody, get that dog down off the screen now. Sorry. Well, cleaning up those dictionaries is long overdue, and the banning committee was unanimous on clap, knucker, and nuts. But, you know, snatch has just caused an uproar. I told you there'd be trouble there. Look, Vera, I really don't have any feelings about snatch. Oh, well, by the way, I guess you heard Judge Buckney finally passed on. I could hardly believe it. I thought he was better. He was sending people to prison just last week, and now he's gone. Did he break the record? Missed it by four. Oh, that reminds me. Do you have the phone number of the judge's maid? What was her name? Something Mexican. Yolanda? Oh, that's right. That's the one you're Stanley's dating, isn't it? Yes, Vera. How do you hold up? I'm used to it. Well, I sure hope I can get her to work for me. You know, Lupe just isn't working out at all. This is the last time I get a maid from the employment office. Next time I'm going directly to the Border Patrol. Uh, look, Vera, uh, if we ban Snatch, we'll have to change the name of the organization. Bertha, God damn it! Vera, I've got to go. Bertha, it just hit me. Do you know how much it would cost us to change our letterhead? You're right, Vera. So that's that. Lupe, this coffee certainly isn't very caliente. Let me call you back. I'll take care of it, Mama. Honey, it is not a matter of taking care of it. It's not normal. It's not normal for you to have eight to ten dogs around you all the time. And don't bring that dog in the house. Jody, I know you heard me. Honey, don't bring... Oh, it's a bit the cutest thing. Oh, look at you. He's done it to me again. Oh, 
to go in the 25 cent missing pit. Oh, anything you say, long arm. Uh, do you want shave ice or cube ice? You just give me ice. I have to ask. That's my job. Hey, Biggin, don't burn my weenie. <laughs> you can hear yourself sometimes. <laughs> I really do. Ellen, you're the only woman I know that takes more than five minutes for a missed pet. This is our list from Turn that the out. news update concerning the recently deceased Judge Roscoe Buckney. Now, the body was found by Nikki Mayberry, who'd gone over to collect for the newspaper, and Nikki wishes to quelch all rumors that the judge was found dead in a women's bikini swimsuit. He says there's no truth to that rumor it's whatsoever. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. According to Nikki, it was a 1950 turquoise Dale Evans one-piece swimming suit with lots of cow-gal fringe. Services are pending at Hubert Funeral Home. Ain't what do you know? <laughs> no about what? Don't give me that. You know something. There are mean and vicious rumors flying around town, and there you are, sucking on a pickle. I'd kill for a picture of that judge. I know somebody who's got one. <laughs> what do you know? I wonder where he got that kind of swimsuit around here. I bet he ordered it in the mail. I mean, that, that was a girl on the phone earlier. He says he wants that grill cleaned up for the health inspector. Yeah, well, Verl can kiss me where I can't reach. Please. Hi. Hi. Did you hear about you know who being found dead and you know what? Nothing surprises me anymore. Well, that old judge sent two of my men to prison. And he's never going to send another. For that, I'm thankful the old fart's dead. I didn't mean that. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't even have brought it up. Do you suppose he was one of those people, Bertha? I would kill for a picture. Please. Do you want the usual? Might as well. Anita, flop one cheesy greasy. Let it bleed. Well, you could fry an egg in that heat. If you move one chair over, you'll be under the blower. That heat is unchristian. Last time you were here, Bertha, was the day Stanley got out of reform school. I remember that. I was so afraid Stanley wasn't going to be on that bus. I remember you were a wreck. Well, I couldn't help but think about the time long before that. I waited in here for my husband, Hank, to get off that bus from prison. Jody, in my arms, waited and waited. I had chicken and dumplings at home on Timmer, Hank's favorite. And Stanley starts a fire in the ashtray. Embarrassed me so bad I had to take them all outside and waited in that heat. And while I was waiting and watching the bus unload and no Hank, Stanley talked Charlene into climbing into an empty trash can. Rolls her half a block before I could stop it. That's the only time I ever whipped my kids in public. Stanley for meanness and Charlene for being stupid enough to let him do it. Well, I took them home, put them all to bed. And I took those chicken and dumplings and threw them to the dogs. Never fixed chicken and dumplings again. <laughs> Don't even remember how. I'm glad Stanley got off that bus. I hate to feel that way about me. Oh. <laughs> Stanley, I want you to run me down to the funeral parlor so I can view Judge Buckney. Oh, Lord, nothing would ever get me out in this heat except to see him dead. Oh, Stanley, that's real pretty. Now, I want you to sign that one. Oh, hell, Pearl, don't start. It's only colored pencils. Well, I think I'll let people know you draw. It's a gift. <gasps> oh, there's that egg-sucking poodle again. I'll get it this time. Where's my strip? There it is. I'm gonna kill me a poodle. There's not this. I'm gonna make you a bitter pill. Help her, you're crazy. Oh, Stanley, don't say that. I'm not. Here, puppy, puppy, puppy. Get over here, egglet. I can't watch. There you are. I told you not to come in my yard. 
Chester finds out you poisoned his $2,000 bird dog, he's going to have a conniption fit. No, Stanley, he'll scream like a bat. Hell. Be calm, Stanley. We've got to think. Hell, Pearl, I'll tell Uncle Chester it's my fault. I let Ripper out. Well, it was only a matter of time before he got hit by a car. of security have you blue if so come by dd's used weapons and browse through our complete selections of used guns and knives or find what you need in our mason tear gas department now we understand that many people are hesitant to buy used weapons but all of dd's weapons are absolutely guaranteed to kill now if you find a weapon here that won't kill you bring it back and we'll give you something that will. It's on our guarantee. If Dee Dee's can't kill it, it's immortal. Ow! Hello, Pearl. Goodbye, Simon. Is that you? Oh, what has he done to you? <laughs> oh, Judge, you look so waxy. Well, he's waxed you down, Judge, so you look good. You old son of a bitch. A stroke. It was your conscience that killed you. Those same tight little lips. Well, those beady little eyes will never see the light again, will they, Judge? Oh, what could have ever have made me want to love you? Tell me how, 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 how could I? I guess a young girl can be foolish. Then you were always too good for me, weren't you, Judge? Just too good. Well, that's all right. I took it. Then you sent my favorite nephew, Stanley, to the form school. And for what? Spray painting stop signs. Might as well have killed him, Judge. He's never been the same. I told you then. I would sing over your grave when you die. And, Judge, I feel a song coming on. Oh, the fox went out one stormy night. He prayed for the moon to give him life. He said, I've got many miles to go before I reach the town, oh, town, oh. Well, how the hell is that? Well, dear Cart, how 
آجی بارکل بارکل هنی هنی wait out there in the lobby be reverent you think he makes a lovely looking corpse? Well, Barjo, I mean it. Well, Pearl, I just think it's unfortunate that Wexler was away at that embalmer's convention in Lubbock. You know, Wexler is a much better mortician than Finest Blind. Oh, Finest never gets the color right. Never. When Finest does them, they just look Dead and stale and waxy. Virgil, Virgil, that's to sign your name and not to draw in. Quit it now. Vera, that boy's not right. Glass houses. Well. Judge Buckney has met his maker at last. Michael, I'm going to knock you in the back. Mate. Met his maker at last. In a Dale Evans swimsuit. <laughs> oh, Judge, I don't believe I can stand it. And he said, I've got many miles to go. Before we reach the world, town old town Imagine how safe I feel. Of course, uh, I had a lot of time to think about it while I was in reform school. <laughs> yeah, Judge, why do you think I'd nuzzle up to that homely housekeeper of yours? You're lying. She thought I was in love. Oh, I kept it up, yeah. I kept it up till I got me a copy of all her keys and I just walked right through your goddamn front door. Walk right up the stairs to your bedroom and all you could do was lay there staring in space and before I had time to think about it, it was over. All it took to finish you off was a few little air bubbles right in the veins. Man, it was hell getting you in that swimsuit. It was worth it. Well, I guess we're even. Why don't I feel like it, huh? You know what? You know what? Someday after my mama's dad, I may just turn myself in. I don't know about it, believe it. They're just like you. They don't think I got the brains to pull it off. It's so adorable. 
You sweet little thing! Get out there and play with Woofy. Come on. Right. Just what we need. More dog food. Oh, good. It's Stanley. Stanley, we couldn't wait supper on you. Fix your plate, honey. It's on the stove. I gotta get to the Piggly Wiggly before it closes. Your daddy wants the steak. What's the matter? Beanie Weenies ain't good enough for him? Where have you been? I had to bury a dog. Oh, Stanley. Well, gross me out of the table, why don't you? Why don't you kiss my rosy red... Stanley, please try to be nice to your sister. Yeah. I'm going to buy you a steak, too. Mama, you don't have to do that. I want to. Mama, did you forget your car keys? Mama? Here we go again. It seems like some people just can't stay out of trouble now, can they? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, hey, you wouldn't put me on now, would you, Stan? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, son, I got evidence. Yeah, I got the proof. Got everything I need to know about you, Stanley. Yeah, some people are just destined for a life in crime. You know how much money the state spent on you, boy, to rehabilitate you? And just look at you. You're what we call a habit. Hey, 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 hey. You gonna charge me with anything? Yeah, I'm gonna charge your ass, son. But first of all, I wanna talk to you about this. <laughs> now, Stan... Now, Stanley, I want to know what you're doing with the hypodermic needle in your car. Yeah, someone here to see you. In a minute. You doing drugs, boy? Hey, look at my arms. Come on. Look at them. You look as close as you want to. You put a magnifying glass up to my arms. There ain't no needles in my arms. You want to know what you're doing with the needle in your car, Stanley? Because my mama's got diabetes and I carry an extra needle around in case she has a fit. There ain't been nothing in that needle but air, Sheriff. <laughs> nothing but air. Anything wrong with having a hypodermic needle full of air? Sheriff's that a good thing. I said in a minute, not told you not to bother me while I'm interrogating. <laughs> yeah, you think you're real smart. Now, don't you, Stan? <laughs> well, I got a witness. That's right, you know. Now, I got a witness. I wouldn't say you're too smart. No, sir, not too smart. You're kind never is. You didn't charge me with anything, Sheriff. Yeah, I'm going to charge your ass, son. Now, you may think we're just a bunch of stupid old country boys, but we've been keeping an eye on you. You charge me with your dead? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. There you go, Stanley. Traffic tickets. Two of them. One for doing donuts on a golf course. Mm-hmm. The other for no turn signal. Now, Stanley, the next time you take Yolanda out joyriding, I think you better watch her. I told you I'm coming! You're going to stay right where you are, son, till I get $41.27. Just how smart do you think you are now, Stanley? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody slash your tires again? <laughs> no. It's Judge Buckney. It wasn't a stroke. I heard the whole thing. It was murder. Murder? Oh, the tea leaves never lie. Did he kill his daddy? No, Aunt Pearl. He killed Judge Buckney. Who said he did? The sheriff said he found a syringe in Stanley's car. They found needle marks on the judge's arm. They have a witness who heard a confession. Oh, you need to get him a good lawyer. With what? Hank will not let me touch Sadie. 
Well, it's his own son. You tell him that. Well, Chester will just have to do without Ripper's insurance money. He'll pitch a fit, but he'll do the right thing. We've got to get Stanley a good lawyer. That's all there is to it. Oh, thank you, Aunt Pearl. I'm calling Wally C. right now. Oh, no, Bert, please. That man's a complete idiot. Uh, now, um, <laughs> uh, Bertha, uh, I've uh, looked at the situation from uh, all sides, and I, I think the best route to take is to plea bargain. Now, I, I hope we can get it down to 99 years, and there are worse things in life. Otherwise, I feel certain he'll be on death row by Thanksgiving. Your Honor and members of the jury, may I present Exhibit A? So let's swear in the sheriff and get this show on the road. Oh, right. I wonder where Clovis buys his clothes. You betcha. They did set off. Now, Sheriff, according to the lab report, we've seen... Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Please, I need to get over there. Excuse me. The mother of the murderer is my best friend. Excuse me. Yeah, it has my prints on it. I had to touch it. There was no other way to pick it up, but uh, <laughs> it was in his car. You'll just have to trust me on that. Now, Nicky, when you went into the judge's bedroom on the morning in question, what did, what did, what did I said, what did you find? Well, uh, he was lying there in front of the TV set. I remember Leave It to Beaver was on, and... Uh, there he was, better than Dixie. Uh-huh. In a turquoise women's swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. You know, you don't have to repeat, repeat, repeat. I say repeat that. You say, so what did you do then? I like to split a rib laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to have your hide when I get you out. <laughs> no more questions, Your Honor. Let her at him. Oh, come on. Mama. Mama, get away. Please, you save my <laughs> this is Thurston Wheeler. And this is Arlie Struve speaking to you live from the Gifford County Courthouse. Well, we got the latest on the murder for you. And folks, the way I see it, you can kiss Stanley Bumiller goodbye. It's an angry crowd. It is. It is. Hell, he's as good as huh? He is, he is. Two grown men without a brain between them. Where are leaves? Where is she? I see a phone. Hello? Oh, Norma, don't call me now. I got the tea leaves out. Where is she? Where are leaves? She's the only one who can save Stanley. Hello? Oh, Norma, that's terrible. Well, I hope she recovers. Now get off the line. Hello? Along with being the mortician in Tuna, you are also the county, 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 I say the county coroner. Am I correct? Yes, two for the price of one. Oh. People don't like morticians with a sense of humor. I don't think they should even grin. Bertha, promise me that if I should die suddenly, you'll get my body to a good mortician and love it. I'll be damned if Wexler Huber will be the last one to zip me up. Love it. Uh, were there needle marks on the judge's body? Oh, yes. Uh, there was a fresh needle mark found on the main artery of the judge's right arm. Your Honor, I object. Everyone here knows the judge was on IVs for the past several years. The, the, the hole wasn't big enough for an IV. It's true. Uh, an IV makes a much bigger hole. What are you trying to do? Make them vomit? No more questions. Step down. Let's recess for lunch. Everybody back in two hours.
Where is she? Hello? Who? Oh, yes, I'll accept the charges. Where are you? I've called everywhere. Don't move. I'm coming now. Uh, Your Honor, I've got one more witness that's doing this all real quick, and then we can all go home and take a, take a, take I say take a now. Hell, hurry it up. Tex-Mex Special's about to kill me. I think it was the enchiladas. Now, the prosecution wishes to call Finus Bly to the stand. Honey, tuck your shirt tail in. Oh, Mama, get on. I swear to tell the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I certainly do. And furthermore, I was only trying to do my civic duty. And that's it. I heard the whole confession. Liar! You gonna listen to someone who hangs around corpses? What's wrong with corpses? Oh, can it, lab rat? I'm afraid it looks bad, sir. Uh, Your Honor, uh, could we skip the formalities and get the, get the, get the, I say get the jury in and out? Hell yes! Hurry up! Go vote! God, the pain. Stop! Hold everything! Shut her down! I found her! Quick, put her on the stand, Wiley! Oh, my God, it's your land. I object, Your Honor, this is America. I'm for and by Americans, just like it says on the bumper stickers, must we subject the court to the incoherent babbling, 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 I say babbling of a foreign domestic. What you call me? Babbling, how out of hell? I ain't listening to no evidence given from a non-American. I think, dear hope. I have my green card. Will the jury please restrain themselves before I have to call a mistrial and we miss this golden opportunity? Look, Wally, see this one came on, and the beaver came on, eight o'clock, that was much of this book. Help me, God. See, speak English. Yes? Now, Yolanda, you were the housemaid for the judge at the time of his death. Am I correct? See. Tell us, if you will, about the last time you saw the judge. Well, I was bringing him extra Rice Krispies because it was a big day for him. And there he was, watching Captain Kangaroo. Muerto, muerto. What the hell does that mean? God, the pain. If I may, Your Honor, I believe she means she found the judge dead. Am I correct, Yolanda? See, out like a lamb. Now, I have a photograph here that the sheriff's office took of the judge at 9.30 that same morning. Now, is this how the judge was dressed when you found it? I know. Stanley, you stole my swimsuit. No more questions. You may step down. Your Honor, I move for a dismissal. Ah! On what grounds? On the grounds that nobody was murdered. The judge died of a stroke early in the morning while having breakfast and watching Captain Kangaroo. My client didn't even enter the house till just before leave it to Beaver. The judge was so far gone, my client didn't even know he was dead when he injected him and dressed him in the swimsuit. Now, the only thing Stanley Bumiller is guilty of is bad taste. We all know you can't kill a corpse. Now, I put it to you, Your Honor, can a corpse be murdered? Say it off anyway! Will the prosecution please approach the bench? Clovis, what in the hell? What in the hell is going on here? Now, this is supposed to be a murder trial, and you'll be lucky to get a conviction for corpse meddling. How do you think this makes me look politically? Well, I just... A political ally found dead in a Dale Evans swimsuit. This was supposed to be over in two hours. I am due at the country club in 20 minutes to announce re-election. The press is waiting, and I was counting on a death sentence to start my campaign off with a bang. Well, I would go over. And on top of everything, you recommended the answer letter. If you weren't married to my sister, I swear to God, I'd put you away for 25 to life. God. 
Get more gas in the air. Well, I'll call the country club for you. I'll tell them you'll be a little late. The hell, the hell you will. Are you crazy? Stealing G. Miller back out on the street and you want me to show up late for the press passing gas? You never had any political sense whatsoever, Clovis. You never did. Wiley, get over here. God, it hurts. Your Honor, if you ask me, it's not the enchiladas. That guacamole was awful brown. You mention Mexican food again, and I'll hold your ass in contempt. You've been a big help. This was supposed to be covered on both sides. I know that. I do. And I owe you one, but there were elements in my client's behalf over which I could exercise minimal fiduciary control. What the hell does that mean? God, this whole thing has gotten completely out of hand. I'm going to end it. Shut up, Clovis. We'll get him next time. Case dismissed! <laughs> Stanley Bumiller is free. He is. He is, he is. We don't know whether it was the evidence or the enchiladas that got him off, but he's free. He is, but he'll be back. You can count on he that. Will. He will. And uh, from our national news desk, nuclear accident imperils millions in seven states. Texas not included. Well, all right. Well, that's all the news we got for you. That's it. So we're going to say good night to you. Good night. And we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And till then, this is Radio OKKK signing off, saying, remember our motto, if you can find some place you like better than tuna, move. Go on. Get out of here. Here go.